Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Dave Savage and the whole team over at Mortgage Coach, I'm Todd Bookspan, the founder of Win by Noon, and welcome to another Friday Mastermind. I saw a post this week that I made that literally it's been five years since Dave and I opened this up as a public mastermind. Five years ago, we invited uh, all of you to join into our Facebook group that for the previous year we had started and been leading Friday mastermind calls only for people who had signed up for a product called uh, Insane Productivity with Mortgage Coach. And uh, it's exciting. It's always exciting to be here on a Friday. And uh, Dave will be with us shortly, but luckily I'm joined by my co-host is with the mostest, Deborah Bird from Plug and Play SM. Welcome, Deborah. Good morning. I can't believe y'all have been doing this for five years. And can I just also say that that's how long sometimes it takes of consistency and persistence to get the kind of results that this group has with just building a community. So good job. And thank you for both doing this group. Well, I'm only like 10% of it, but you know, Dave is, Dave has been the 90% push along with the, the rest of all of you, but it's uh, something I'm very proud of. And it's really been a, re a rewarding track. And, you know, for that first year, I think we had probably 50 or, or so people, but one of those people is uh, our special guest today, uh, Dave Gallegos with Zenith Home Loans out of Colorado. Welcome, Dave. Thanks, man. It's great to be here. Yeah, it was fun back then because that was a group where people who had been part of Darren Hardy's Insane Productivity Group were able to contribute to the Mortgage Coach edition. And uh, I think yeah, your I little commentary like was on my favorite section. I was on like the first launch call because Dave, uh, Dave knew that I was a big fan of Darren Hardy's stuff and the, I'd been to Insane Productivity and then I'd been to, yeah, so that was it. And Compound Effect was a great book and all of that. So yeah, that's yeah, cool. I can't believe it's been five years. That's amazing. Well, it's actually been six years since since Insane Productivity with Masters with uh, with Mortgage Coach. So it was six years ago that we actually started the group, but we didn't open it up for the public until five years ago. Oh, okay, I see. All right. So well, it was a it was a secret group for the first for the first year. So, uh, but all those recordings are on the YouTube channel. You can look back and see how you know Dave and I looked back in the day, and and uh, this Dave as well. And so um, today we're going to talk about why now is a great time to hire new loan officers and. You know, I know that we've had uh, you on in the community, Dave, talking a few times about, you know, your your new hire program. And uh, I think it's just one that, uh, you know, over the years, I've talked to so many leaders who've tried to figure out um, how to do it. And it seems like you've done a really good job. But before we talk about that, let's just sort of talk about the why. I mean, why do you think, you know, obviously, Dave invited you to be part of this call. Why do you think now is a good time to hire new loan officers? <laughs> Well, I'm, I'm, I'm an incurable optimist. And so I, I, I always, whatever, whenever something not well is going, I can always, I, I just have a knack for finding the positive in it. And so as difficult as the market has been, and I'm, I, we just shared some stats today. We just got off our, we do a Friday morning uh, sales team call called coffee for closers, kind of goofy, but that's what, that's what we call it. And, and, you know, from, from, uh, from uh, Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross. And so the, um, uh, we shared some statistics that show that the market in Denver isn't really that far off from where it's been the last six Junes. Like, so we compared housing sales and it's like 500 fewer housing sales than the average for the last six years. And everybody acts like, oh my God, it's so hard. It's like, yeah, you're paying attention to the wrong headlines. And, and, and we keep talking about one of the reasons I think it's a great opportunity is because refinances have gone away. We've, my, my company, I, I started this company in 1997. It's been Zenith Home Loans now for the last, oh, it's our fourth year. We launched a JV, but the, uh, every time there was a big market shift, we grew. And I think we, we grew because we always have been purchase focused. We've always been focused on that purchase market. So I think it's a good opportunity for new people because all the people that got in the business the last two or three years don't know how to do purchase loans very well. And they aren't relationship focused. They're transactional focused primarily. And I'm not saying this is not everybody, but when you read about massive layoffs at these big organizations, you're like, well, yeah, those are all the, one of my guys called it. It's like, well, those are all the people that like go from mortgage to windows and siding to cars, to something else. And they're not really committed. Like I've been in this business for 25, everybody on this call, Todd, I don't know how long you've been in the business, 30 years. We've been in the business a long time and we're committed to the long term. So if you are committed to the business on a long term scale, like what are you going to be doing in 10 years? Not next month. You can't focus on next month if you're new. You have to focus on I'm building a I'm building a career here. So if we can get the right people, 
I don't think there is a bad time to get in the mortgage business. That's I'm, I'm being completely honest. I, I don't think there's a bad time. Well, you know, it's funny that you say that because I was running on the boardwalk yesterday with my wife and we ran by these, these two guys who had backpacks on with their yoga mats in it. And they were having a conversation. The only part of the conversation I heard in the brief time that we ran by him, luckily I run slow so I could hear it was he said, you know, it's kind of like um, a, a job versus a career. He said only 2% of people actually have careers. And it just really made me think that, you know, I've been in business only 23 years, almost Dave. Um, I had a previous career in, in the bike business and, um, but it's, it's a career. And I, and I do think that that is, you know, what's the hat you wear when you show up to work? Do you view this as a job or do you view this as a career? And, um, and I did think it was funny. I, I thought the exact same thing that you said. I thought when I saw that we were going to talk about why now is a great time. I think, you know, I think last month was a great time and six months ago was a great time. And three years ago was a great time. And tomorrow is going to be a great time to join the business too. If you're going to take the career approach and then find, you know, great organization that you can be part of. Couldn't agree more because if you, and I heard that uh, this wasn't just my idea. I had a, a, a very good friend of mine, one of my best friends, and and he was a, he'd been in real estate for about he'd been my realtor and he'd been in real estate. I didn't get in this business till I was thirty seven years old. So I mean I'm like I was on my like fifth career, Todd. So uh, so it was. Um, uh, but but I asked him. I said, is, "Is this a good? Do you think this is a good time?" And he's like, "Dude, people are that are in the business for the long haul. There's never a bad time to get in." That's just how it is. And if you're only getting in because it's a good time to get in, you're not going to be around. I, I really believe that you won't be around because you're taking a short, you're take, you've got too, too much of a short-term focus, right? You have to have a long-term focus. That's what makes it a good time. There he is. What's up, everybody? <laughs> there he that? is, the Chief Innovation Officer of the Mortgage Industry. Welcome, Mr. Savage. Thank you. It's awesome to have a team where I didn't even need to worry about being late because I knew uh, Todd and Deborah would kick it off and it would go. It would be awesome. What has been awesome? For the We've picture been about with you. with the background of Dave. I don't know why this visual keeps coming into my head, but like of a lab, like seeing a graduated cylinder and just him innovating. Like you never know what he's working up. He's well, like wait, the, wait till you see. It's going to take a couple months, but once I get my office dialed in, well, yeah, I'll be looking like the chief innovator. Hey, um, Robert, because I was late, do you mind um, taking a, a bumper? So more everyone watching this, you're going to see what happens behind the scenes before we go live. We make a little, we got we got to have Dave Gallegos in it. You guys probably did it without me, but we I, I got I to gotta have a bumper. So Robert, can you get ready to take a, a, a screenshot real quick? <laughs> all right, guys, put us all on. Give, put, it, put, put your hand up. <laughs> Oh, whoa, wait, wait. Just in case, Robert, are you there, by the way? I am, my man. Oh, okay. Let's go. Let's one more time, guys. <laughs> Got it. So, all right. All right. Hope all you guys right, enjoyed guys. that as much as we did. <laughs> so, so, guys, that's how, if you're using YouTube and you're creating video that you want to get people to click on, you got to put, you got to be intentional about that thumbnail. So, when people are, remember, you want to be scroll stopping. And, and with Dave Gallegos on here, I mean, we're, we're scroll stopping. Uh, all right. So where, 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 are, where are we, um, Todd? You know, we were just talking about how um, really in Dave's opinion, and I kind of seconded that, you know, although this is about why now is a great time to get in the business, that it's always a great time to get in the mortgage business as long as it's going to be a career. And we didn't really talk numbers. I'd heard, you know, there was something crazy like 200,000 new originators in the last year or two. Is that, is that accurate? Does anyone know that number? It's, it's more than that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's a staggering number. And so, you know, I, I, what my hope is, is that there's some loan officers on the call here who are contemplating whether this is the right career and hopefully we can give you some motivation to, to make you think that it is. And, um, and then obviously some leaders out there who will do what Dave has done and invest in folks, whether it's someone who's been in the business as a refi loan officer, trying to figure out how to make a purchase career out of it, or um, as Dave has done is actually hire people who have no mortgage experience and then turn them into uh, a career originator. Hey, have, have we, have you guys gone through and just kind of listed out all the reasons why now is the time, you know, has that like, have we got a little like, now's a great time because of blank, blank and blank. Have you guys done that yet? No, let's do it. So let's rapid fire guys. And, and, and let's literally every one of us will do one. Like here's one reason. I think within five minutes we can net out all the reasons why now is the right time. And I'm going to start it because uh, I texted, uh, 
the way Dave got here is I thought like, who are the leaders I know that are always bringing new loan officers in? And I, I asked them, Hey, do you think, and I didn't lead them. I just asked them, do you think now is a great time? And by the way, every single one of them said, yes. Uh, Danny Harani, uh, when he was at caliber was, you know, responsible in running, uh, a, a platform that was bringing 50 new loan officers into the industry systematically, thoughtfully, multiple times a year. And, and I love one thing he said, on a farm, there's still work to do in the winter. Boom, uh, super good quote. Uh, absolutely, now is a great time. You know, he, he said, you know, in this business cycle. And that, so that's Danny. And then my biggest reason why now is the guys, all the loan officers have been doing this. They have different, they, they have expectations that aren't going to serve them. And new loan officers, guys, the mortgage industry represents a huge income opportunity, even in this market. And brand new loan officers, they're coming from a lesser opportunity. So, so bringing them in with, you know, the winter expectations that we have right now, why not? Uh, who, Dave Gallegos, you go next, and then I'll go to you, Todd, and you, Deborah. The uh, the reason that I think it's the, a specific reason why I think it is is because there's going to be a lot of the, a lot of the people that got into the business the last few years when it was easy to get loans are going to leave they're going to exit the industry and it's going to leave a void that that a new loan officer who's committed to the long term that's the key is committed to the long term can fill and um, being a purchase focused loan officer who's focused on building relationships that's what's necessary to to partner with the right kind of uh, that's where, and that's how we've always grown during these downturns. We've grown because we're purchase focused. And that's why I think it's a great time because there's going to be a void that needs to be filled. Todd, give us a reason. You know, there's fear in the streets, right? You know, Warren Buffett says to, you know, when everyone else is uh, optimistic to be pessimistic and when everyone else is pessimistic, it's time to be optimistic. And, you know, I think ultimately when you've got, as you guys said it, you got people who are going to be leaving the industry um, I think you have people who are paralyzed by the fear. And so even, even some great loan officers I know right now are, are kind of in a funk. And, you know, anytime there's people in a funk and anytime people are leaving the industry, you know, someone who was in the industry for the last year probably created a realtor relationship or two or five. And that realtor is out looking for somebody new. So why shouldn't it be you? Love it. Deborah, give us one reason. We'll I think now around more, out of reasons. more than ever, agents need loan officers. And so just, you know, seeing the, um, TCAs that people have been doing of the price drop versus rate drop. I mean, it's, that is a way to go whale fishing right now and get one on the line. That's just, it's easy. They need financial literacy. I think Americans need financial literacy more than ever. Um, ironically, when we were talking earlier, uh, when I was watching Elvis last night, I thought here, he made all this money and they didn't know how to manage it. And you see that today. So I think it's an easy way to be the captain of the wealth team, not only for your referral partners, but also for the community. Love it. I, I, I've got a number of quotes I'm gonna cite, but I'm gonna do another one from Danny. My belief, I'm just reading this verbatim. My belief is that in order to grow the right way, you always need new blood on your team. And, and, and new loan officers, you know, not all of them are millennials, but, you know, we're bringing people in from other careers, but a lot of them are, and they're more likely to embrace the technology mortgage coach and then everything you just said, Deborah, it's going to help elevate your team. You know, I uh, interviewed Wally Elderberry, El Elderberry, I, I think that's his name, his last name, but Wally, and um, this week, you know, on Tuesday, and I interviewed a new loan officer that was going on his first year, no, well, finishing his first year in the business. And, and having someone like that that comes in, did $20 million, he's doing really well, he's super successful, that's going to level everybody up. That's going to make everybody better. So another great reason is get the right new loan officer, put the right systems around them, and not only will they win, but they're going to help your team win. Dave, what's another one? The other one is, and this, this goes for everybody, the reason I like bringing people that haven't, been, and, and this isn't like I wouldn't hire an experienced loan officer, especially if you've been in the business a year or two. It's still, if, you, if, if, if you're not getting the professional sales coaching that you need, then you should, you got to find that. But when you, 
when you are somebody who hasn't been in the business, there's, I look at it as like, well, there's a whole network of people that we currently don't know here at Zenith Home Loans that you do. And that's a great opportunity because it's just a whole network of people. Whereas if I bring an experienced loan officer in our market, in the, the, they already know a lot of the same agents, right? Like these, but these guys know somebody completely different, which is awesome. So I think that's another reason why getting into the business brand new is a great opportunity for people. Uh, get another reason, and guys, don't make them up. Like when we run out of good, meaningful reasons, we'll switch to, okay, we're in the business. Let's review the playbook. Let's talk about the how to be successful. So we got lots of time to do that. If you're watching it, I just want to, I want to have a bunch of, hey, here's six, 10, 12, whatever reasons why. So Todd, another you know, reason. It's a little bit. It's a little bit about what you both said. It's it's a new set of eyes, right? It's a different perspective from someone who doesn't have the curse of knowledge that we have by being in the business for 20 plus years, because we we think we know it all. So when someone comes in who's new and asks questions, ironically, I was part of um, Danny's new loan officer training at Caliber. He brought me in to kind of launch the group. We actually did a win by noon launch with them. And then um, it, we kind of close it out at the end on productivity. And then Danny and I got to do Q&A with the group. And, and people who have that... Um, you know, I don't want to call it ignorance because that's the, that has a negative connotation, but they just have that, that uh, uh, idea, that quest for knowledge. Um, just ask great questions. And I found the same thing in my group coaching that I, you know, I did back-to-back -back sessions of the first two quarters this year. You know, half the people were, you know, within six months in the business and they just had different perspectives than the, those of us who've been in the business for a long time. And I think that's really needed to keep the industry fresh. Love it. Deborah. I, I would add, reasons? I would add it's, it's never been easier just because of the evolution of social media to get instant credibility. And when I mean instant credibility, if you're proactively making content, you're doing a reel a day, you're adding to your stories. As soon as someone lands to your feed, you're going to have that almost celebrity type status and, and credibility. So instant credibility, you can increase your conversion, you can increase retention. So because of social, which is free, it's not like you have to go and pay for phone book ads or billboards or magazine covers. It's, it's something that you, it's an action you can do every single day and you can get business from it if it's done effectively. So for that reason, I think it's another easy way to get in. So you're not worried about, well, you know, who's going to trust me with their mortgage, just start posting on social and learning and growing and you'll be the authority in your market center. So I'm going to give my last reason for now. I do want to push the community that we have here. If you think like, hey, this is why it's a great reason to bring new loan officers to the business, put that in chat. Um, you know, I'm going to. I got another one. Give, let, me, let me share well, one. Gonna, I, I, by the way, I didn't say it's the last. Okay. I, it's I, the I last got one. one for me. Okay. Well, let me go. And then All right, go. you go. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's, remember, that's how we've been going around the circle. It's your, it's, it's your deal. You're right. You go ahead. Well, no, but that, so I'm just I'm saying, usually I'm in not, charge at my I'm company, gonna, and I just do what I want. So that's okay. Well, that's just, <laughs> and, I, and I'm not going to, you're, you're going to go next. I'm just saying, I'm not going to go again on this question. Uh, so, so this came from Ben Lemon, who, um, do you know Ben Lemon, Dave? I do. I do. Yeah. He was in our, he was in that second Amplify I did. Okay, you you two should network and be buddies because he he's like you, where he loves bringing in new loan officers, and he's been doing it for a long time. I know that. I'll uh, find out. Which, yeah, actually, actually, when I was in um, Salt Lake City last time, and he said, you know, him and I had dinner, and he said, "Do you mind if I bring two of my new loan officers? I'd love them to be part of that dinner." And I'm like, "Yeah." So I found out like that's his business model: bringing in new loan officers. Uh, he's FYI. also a rock star. Yeah, yeah, I think he's a, I don't think, I know he is a Deborah Bird plug and play SM rock star. So just a little reminder to y'all. Uh, so Ben said, and I just asked him the question, and he said, I don't think there's ever a bad time to get into the mortgage business if you work. Um, and focus on the activities, not the results. So guys, that's powerful. Focus on the activities, not the results. And this tees up my kind of last reason is guys, there's never been a better time and an easier time to be a loan officer. Like if you watch my little five minute video of my journey, 36 year journey of, I started with a yellow sheet of paper. And my, my first CRM was a recipe box. Uh, and now we look at where CRMs have gotten 
we look at like this point of sale, like the consumers filling out the app. Are you kidding me? There's <laughs> technology that will help calculate income. Are you kidding me? Uh, there's a mortgage coach advice-based digital presentation that makes me look like a rock star. Are you kidding me? You know, there's sales boomerang alerts where you put data in a CRM and leads come floating out of it. Are you kidding me? Uh, you know, there's platforms like um, HomeBot where you put people in the HomeBot and now they're managing their wealth. I mean, like guys, it's never been easier to be a loan officer. And all you got to do is just, I think in Dave's playbook, it's like start with 300 contacts in your sales boomerang powered CRM, learn how to deliver. Well, anyways, I'm getting into how to, but here guys, it's never been easier. So like, why wouldn't we want to bring in fresh blood and teach them how to do all these things, these superpowers, it's never been easier time. Dave, your turn. So, so kind of piggybacking on what you said, it's never been easier. When I, in 1997, I had to drive around neighborhoods to look for listing signs to get the names of real estate agents. Or I had to borrow one of my buddies, the same realtor that I was talking about earlier, Todd, I had to borrow his, his MLS book to get the names of real estate agents. There, I, you couldn't get that online. And, and there was no social, to Deborah's point, there's no social media. There was no way to like, you couldn't promote yourself. And then the learning opportunity that exists today versus 1997. I didn't have anybody to talk to. I didn't have anybody to like, look, there was no mortgage coach YouTube channel with like everything I'd ever want to know to learn how to be a successful loan officer. It's right there. You interviewed Giuseppe last week. And I don't know if you caught it at the very end. He goes, Dave. And that's why he's like reluctant to do interviews with you. He's like going, all I ever do is watch the mortgage coach videos and do what they say. So like, oh my God, the guy closes 600 loans in a year. So that was not available in 1997 when I got in the business. In 2022, you can find out anything you want to know instantly. That's amazing. That's that's an amazing opportunity that didn't exist 25 years. And, and I want to make sure he was probably also calling out MMI, you know, and other data companies now where you can not only find realtors in your market, you can click and know exactly how many listings, how many buyers, who their lender is. You know how many lunches I had with realtors that had never closed a, a deal in like six months? And I didn't know that. Like, like going, oh, good, I got a meeting. <laughs> like You couldn't yeah. like just find out. And, like, and, and, and if you have a realtor relationship and they're not giving you enough business and you're like, oh, they're doing all their loans with this dude. Or, right. you know, this, I'll be like, guys, it's never been easier. So Dave, any, any last, why? Like, uh, this is why now is the it. time for new blood. Anything else from you? That's it. I mean, just okay. like I said, you've got to have access to Ben, Ben, I could, I, I talked here. So Mike White, you've interviewed Mike before. Mike and I were talking about a week ago, week and a half ago. Coach said, Mike, like everybody. There's only two reasons why you can fail at this business. You don't know what to do, or you do know what to do, and you're just not doing it. That's it. And if you don't know what to do, you can find out. So to Ben's point, you got to do the work. You got win by noon. You got to use the system. You got you to gotta show up. But that's it. It's one of those two. Which is it for you? Because I'll show you everything that you need to know. Everything. And you just stole my thunder. You just stole my thunder with that last comment because that was going to be my, I thought I was done with ideas, but really in the end, it's, it's not going to be a very popular idea, um, but loan officers are lazy. You know, I don't, I don't know too many loan officers who've been in the business a long time who are um, working a full eight hour day right now. I mean, we've had interviews with people who said they're working harder right now than ever, some big originators, um, and they're doing it to take ground and they're doing it to keep um, their, their pipelines full. But if you're a new loan officer and you're willing to sit down and work eight hours a day doing what the activities are that we know prove to be successful. I mean, you guys just nailed it. I mean, that's, that's absolutely it. It doesn't, it's not rocket science. It's just uh, being willing to, you know, pick up the phone. So my brother-in-law is on our, on our mortgage team. And he just, he was out here visiting me in California um, over 4th of July. And he's like, well, I really do want to double my business. And I said, okay, we had that conversation back in December. And, and I said, well, you know, to double your business, we looked at his activity and said, you're gonna have to double your activity. Um, and uh, it finally sunk into him because, you know, I, I hate to say it, it didn't sink in before. His activity increased, but it didn't double. And so all of a sudden we had this conversation. He called me on Monday and he said, you know what? I want you to know I'm going to double my business. And, you know, sure enough, every day our team has a call. They report out the activity that they do, how many calls they made to clients and leads, how many calls they made to partners, 
and partner prospects, how many conversations they had with, with people that were quality conversations and live meetings. And guess what? He's doubling his activity and guess what's going to happen. He's going to double his results. In fact, his applications, I think equal the rest of the team combined right now, he's really crushing it because he's doing what other people aren't willing to do right now. Um, and I think it goes back to that fear piece. I think some people are burned out. Right. And so I don't want to be critical of people in the industry who aren't working that hard, but um, you know, when I hear uh, the Jeremy Forciers and the Denise Donahue's of the world say, gosh, you know, I am working really hard right now. Um, that just tells you that the rest of us need to also. Well, and so I'll guys, just add, oh, go ahead. Well, I know I was going to say, we're going to transition in a minute to how, like, let's pull up the playbook. Let's revisit it. Let's give that chapter. But before we do that, Deborah Bird, any more wise? Well, I was, I was just going to say, to piggyback on what Todd said with Denise, I, I have a lot of you on here who will send me messages or DMs about wanting what Denise has. And it's that whole iceberg effect where most people want what she has, but they're not willing to do the work long enough. You may do it for five or six months and grind and be disciplined, but it's that instant gratification that you're expecting. And it just doesn't work that way. It takes consistency and persistence over time to get those kind of results. So don't, don't think it's just this, you know, get rich quick scheme. And then, you know, you can click an easy button. There is no easy button. And she still works really hard today with all the content that she's creating. It's hard work, but we enjoy it. So don't be scared. Choose your hard. It's going to be hard to be broke and miserable. And it could be hard to pick up the phone and follow a plan and do what your coach tells you to do. So choose your hard. Ooh, I, I sense like some quotes there, like I, some social media wisdom just came out. Let's package that and get it on social. So, uh, so all right, guys, we're going to transition. Uh, as Before I pull up um, the blog that we're going to focus on, you know, I do want the community to know, like in my new role of chief innovation officer, uh, you know, I'm going to, I'm not necessarily going to make more YouTube videos because I think I make a lot. I don't know, I think I need to do more but I want to be more quality about the content I create. So in my role as chief innovation officer, there's going to be um, more intention, probably more micro content. Uh, our, our Facebook group, you know, I'm, I'm not going to add more time to what I spend there, but I am going to be more strategic and have more resources to make sure the mortgage coach Facebook group is badass and Facebook is not always a great place for loan officers to spend their time and attention but the Mortgage Coach Facebook group will be. It is today. And then I'm, I'm adding a third pillar to my focus, and that is our blog. So, you know, my vision for this blog is I'm, I'm really creating the avatar, like the person I'm writing this blog for is the producing branch manager. Someone that is a baller, you know, they, they're successful. Someone that is leading and mentoring and growing loan officers. So, so I'm... I think this blog will be incredibly valuable to individual loan officers, brand new in the business. I think it'll be very valuable for people who are trying to go from 20 million to 30 million, from 30 to 50. But I'm really, and, and I hope it's valuable to CEOs and heads of production and regional leaders. But I'm creating this blog for producing branch managers. And, and so, um, you know, this halftime report that I posted last week, Guys, it's a required read for every loan officer and manager. I've never spent more time on a piece of content. I mean, I literally booked at least 30 personal hours of interviewing people, of writing this content. Kristen Messerly, who I think is one of the greatest new generation leaders, I know she spent probably more time than I did. And we had a, uh, you know, Lynn Russo, who's been writing for helping me write for years probably spend 20 hours. So, I mean, this is, this has got a hundred plus hours of work to create something valuable. And we interviewed lots of folks, so check it out. But today we're going to focus on this new loan officer playbook. Now, Dave Gallegos came here because I, I invited him. He was really pivotal to the creation of this, you know, and, and, and Todd and I have collaborated heavily. Like, like I would say this is a collaboration by Todd and I, but I started it. So, my marketing team put my picture at the top, Todd. Could have easily been you and I side by side there, but I didn't I didn't version it. I didn't like, oh guys, we need to put Todd in this one. I just like I took the credit. Um, but but Todd Bookspan, coach, mega producer, has run a branch that's, you know, doesn't run a branch now, but it used to run a branch that did over 500, or not a branch, a team that did over does over 500 loans a year. 
uh, you know, De Jeremy's got his fingerprints in this. You know, there's lots of interviews that I've done that have their fingerprints on this. So guys, let's switch to how to's. So first of all, Dave, you know this blog well because you help collaborate to the writing of this. Is there anything, well, first of all, before I ask you if there's anything missing, what if there was, you know, a most important part, like a, a chapter, you know, because we wrote this in Learn the Mortgage Basics chapters. If there's some things that you think are particularly important on this blog, what are they? My stuff. No, I'm just kidding. Um, the the, the um, Probably, you know, the foundational piece is really critical. We had Ken Perry from the Knowledge Coop in our office once, and he, I shared this on our Coffee for Closers call this morning. Ken Perry said, I became a top producer because I knew my guidelines better than anybody. I just studied guidelines. And in two years, I was an expert and I was the top producer in our office. I went from like no loan experience to the top producer because I knew my guidelines. So the foundational piece that you talked about mortgage knowledge in there, not, not necessarily tactical sales stuff, but, but like the strategic or not strategic, but the actual details of Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, your lender, like the programs that you have and what they are and how they work so that you can be the most knowledgeable. That's a common theme among top producers everywhere that um, they will say is like, oh, I, I know that I, 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 we're, we're able to do loans that anybody could do here. They just don't know how, right? Any other company or any other loan officer could do the loans that we do if they knew how. So we get a lot of business that way because we save deals all the time and we market for that. So becoming an expert at this, it goes back to the, Todd, what you mentioned, it goes back to the like, is this a career or a job? Are you in this for the long haul or in the short term? Because if you can make high six figure or seven figure incomes at any profession, how good do you have to be at it? The answer is you have to be really good. That just goes without saying. And so are you going to make the investment in your mortgage DNA knowledge that mortgage like, IQ mortgage so IQ, saying you mortgage, yeah, mortgage IQ, IQ like, do you know the is, Fannie guidelines do you know the LLPAs do you know how to get a PIW do you know how to get the uh, D1C fine like do you know all this stuff that makes it like really easy to do that not easy but simpler to do this job so Todd I'm going to come to you with the same question and then you Deborah but before I do that Dave um I agree 100% that, that that's an elephant and you can't, and, and I just, there's a dichotomy of that because you can't wait till you have a high mortgage IQ to get after it. So you're gonna, if you read the playbook, you gotta start hitting your database. You gotta start delivering TCAs. I think with you, it's on the 30th day. It's like after 30 days of mortgage IQ and basic stuff, we gotta go sell. So, so let me qualify. With, with that said, I want you to qualify that for yeah. the new LO that, you know, they don't have that, I, that, no, no, I, no, no. that mortgage so, IQ yet. So, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm going to go back to Giuseppe, who, you know, has been working for, here for 20 years. I hired him with no experience. He used to freaking every Saturday, and he would tell you this, he goes, yeah, every Saturday I would read all the product updates and the guideline updates because I wanted to know so that I didn't tell somebody something. You heard him talk about how important it is to not disappoint a customer or a real estate agent. It's like, well, I don't want to tell somebody something that's wrong. So I have to know the guidelines. Like that commitment is what I'm talking about. I'm, you can't wait until you have all the knowledge because I still don't. Nobody here does. None of us have all the knowledge because it changes all the time. It's the decision that you're going to make that it's like, I'm going to become an expert at this and it's going to take my career. And I think the soft skill behind that is the more you know, you, your confidence just grows. And when you can go into a meeting and when you go to present with a borrower, I remember when I first, I was a middle school science teacher and Denise pulled me into the dark side of the world. And <laughs> I mean, the, I, I feared if anybody asked me when I showed a TC, I was like, I surely hope they don't ask how all these numbers make sense. Cause I don't know how they all make sense, but I felt like my cape was when I walked into a room and I could feel confident was when I walked in with mortgage coach and I had a TCA because it was that wow experience where I looked like the smartest person in the room. I still, I was insecure if they would ask certain questions of how over time that was calculated, but they usually didn't ask that. And they felt like I was giving them great consultative advice where I wasn't a pushy salesperson. So throughout my whole life, I've learned, I've become more confident the more that I learn and then apply that learning. So Todd, I totally agree. 
Great wisdom, Deborah. I'm going to come to you with the same question I had with Dave, but, you know, taking the playbook that we have, and Dave, just so you know, the question we're going to come back to you is if there is anything missing from the playbook, you know, that we need to add, you know, if you could scan it, and I, I, before we're done with this I read it call, this morning, I yeah, that, I've got okay. something, I've got but, something, but, we scan it, I scan okay. it, I read it this morning. Todd, Todd, what do you think, if there was, uh, you know, a most important section or a most important piece of advice within this playbook that, guys, don't miss blank? You know, I mean, there's just so much value in there. I think what Dave said, you know, and, and Deborah piggybacked on it's, you know, you have to have the knowledge up front. So when I got in the business, you know, I spent uh, an hour a day is what I, what I'd heard. I'd gone to a Todd Duncan event on fiscal literacy where Jim McMahon and a bunch of folks spoke on the number side of things. And they said, you got to commit an hour a day to learning. And so now I would probably split that up between an hour a day of learning about loans until you're comfortable with loans. And then I would spend the rest of that time watching a video in the Mortgage Coach YouTube channel on the sales side, get ideas that you can execute on. And at some point though, you have to take action. And so, you know, for me really, it's always then what's the action you're gonna take. And so, you know, I'm a big planning guy. You can't plan eight hours of your day. You've got it, you have time in there to react. You know, every, everyone thinks that um, they're gonna be proactive in the day, but most people are reactive all, all the time. And so, you know me, my philosophy is, is do those most important things first. So you get them out of the way so that you can react the rest of the day. And I would just be plotting out in my day, what are those things I need to do? And then I think part of it too is, is really, who is it, who are you gonna surround yourself with? I mean, I feel like right now there's a lot of uh, me versus them mentality in the mortgage business. And you know what, we all are in this business together and you've got great mentors around you. And you know, certainly if you're brand new and you're watching this, then you got to look for who's the best mentor in my market. You know, can I find a big Galegos to go work for who's going to mentor me? For me, that, you know, I would, I would have a question on the guidelines and I had great mentors that I could go to in my office, you know, and speak to. Um, we've got a great community here. So you can certainly ask questions within the mortgage coach community to get, you know, that mentorship, you know, that you need. But if you're a leader that's watching this and think about that, what kind of, how am I putting myself out there? And am I actually being the best I can be to guide these? new loan officer. So every time I'm training somebody new, for me, it's a morning check-in, right? How you doing? What's on your agenda for today? Um, and then when they're brand new, it's a midday check-in, right? Hey, what's going on? Are you still still on track? Are you reacting? Are you being proactive? And then there's an end of the day check-in um, just to say, okay, what, what needs to be tied up before, you know, before you go? And I think that that's, you know, a big part of it is to plan, you know, really plan out what your day looks like so that you can jump into it and do the things that you know, have to be done, right? Dave, you said it when you talked to coach Mike White, right? There's people who know what to do um, and don't do it. And there's people who know what to do and actually do it. And that's what we want you to be, someone who does it. I definitely loved that idea of, for new loan officers, an hour a day of YouTube, Mortgage Coach YouTube or Mortgage Coach blog. So just saying, I like, I particularly like that. And, uh, and then on behalf of Win by New, guys, you, you gotta win. I knew, like where Todd, the interview I did with Todd, where I was interviewing the leader of Win by Noon, like that is a success habit if you establish early in your career that I win by noon. And by the way, to win by noon means you need to have done the prospecting, the most important prospecting you've done by noon, and you need to have done the most important learning you do. I mean, if, if you know, I, I was asked in a podcast recently, like, what is my number one? I don't know if it was, they said your number one success habit or what it was, but early in my career, um, despite the fact that I have ADD and dyslexia and reading is hard for me, but for the day I got in the mortgage business, I, I learned for two hours a day, you know, and sometimes it was very painful reading. Um, thank God for audiobooks and podcasts. And, and now, you know, I still read and I've gotten better, you know, I've got 57 years of practice. Um, so I can read better than I can in high school, but, but I am consuming content that makes me a more successful person at whatever I want to do. So love what you said, win by noon guys. So Deborah, I'm going to ask you now if there was one thing that's most important. And then before this is over, I'm going to ask you what's missing, but let's just answer what, what was the biggest, most valuable point within that playbook that we have today for everyone. And why the, the portion about the database, I, I feel there's loan officers I work with today that they'll often say, I just wish I would have started keeping up with my database sooner, even if that was just an Excel spreadsheet or, you know, a CRM, but it's being intentional and having a plan around how often am I going to send a value add 
piece to an email list? Is it going to be once a week? And do I have that organized in some way? And so to me, the most important part as soon as you enter has got to be your database and database management. And that can be refined over time and it, you'll learn how to grow it. I know you recently interviewed Wally and he's got great ways to help grow a database. But to that point too, Dominic, with your interview that you had with him, it's, and I'd be curious for you guys to answer this later in the call, but if you're a new loan officer, it's so important that whatever team you're joining, what questions should they ask to make sure that they're joining the right team to get the type of support that they're going to need? Because not all branches or coaches or mentorship is the same. And you could tell when Dominic was talking, I mean, I think he said they did an hour a day still today of just script practicing. And so I just want to remind everyone who's listening too, if you're wondering what scripts, like maybe you don't have those written out, go back and watch the script of Palooza. Those are my favorite things to watch from the YouTube channel with Mortgage Coach is reading and listening to those scripts and then sending it to people to get them to practice. Or if they ask, Hey, do you guys have a script for X, Y, Z? It's, it's usually already in the YouTube channel. Just go back and look at some of the script of Palooza's even from a couple of years ago. So to me, database, and then also script practice. Brilliant. And, and guys, I, I, my turn to answer what I thought was favorite and you didn't steal my thunder, but you helped put an explanation mark around it. I, I make the case that if you're in the mortgage business and you make your database your number one priority, and, and guys, we also need to think about redefining what that means. You know, if, if you don't have borrower intelligence, like if you are not collecting, you know, knowing when people's credit score um, goes from not qualifying to north of 700, if you don't have their loan to value so that you can reach out and proactively um, talk about moving up, moving down, consolidating debts. If you don't know all that information, you're at a massive disadvantage to, to a lot of folks. It's still less than 10% of the industry that has data intelligence. But my prediction um, by 2003, four, no later than 2025, um, over 50% of lenders will have borrower intelligence. You know, I just interviewed a CEO of um, Owen, Owen Lee of Success Mortgage, and he thinks it's going to be 30%. You know, but he, he's like, we're getting into the era of the haves and the haves, the haves and the have nots. And the haves are going to use technology. They're going to have CRMs. They're going to have borrower intelligence. They're going to use mortgage coach. They're going to use tools like HomeBot. And the have nots are not, and they're going to lose market share. And I think he's right. And, uh, and uh, anyway, so just databases there. Now, my favorite, because you, you, you said it, it is scripts. Because here's, here's my thesis on why scripts are so important, is that you could not have product knowledge. You know, like, let's assume that you're not going to take Dave's advice and become a ninja with mortgage IQ. Um, and let's, you could not do anything. But if you call your renter friends, Say, hey, I need your help. Guys, this is a Dave Gallegos script. He came up with it. But if you just did this, and then when, you know, one of your, your renters said, oh, I want to look at being a first-time home buyer. If you just did that, one, you're going to get the product knowledge. Two, you're going to, you know, build prospecting calluses. Three, you're going to become a mortgage advisor slash mortgage coach. Um, and, and if you did this script, calling homeowners and saying, hey, I want to do a move up analysis. Will you help me? Like if you just did these two things and you threw everything else in this playbook out, you'd win. You would, you would, you would win. So I, I'm going to call out. I think these, this is the most valuable part of the playbook, these scripts and the activities that will happen as a result of implementing these scripts. And Todd, you raised your hand. You wanted to say something. Oh, uh, you know, I raised my hand. Cause that's, you said, Hey, what might be missing? So if you're calling a homeowner, um, you have a, an easy add-on question. Hey, by the way, um, did you like your real estate agent when you bought your home? And you know, nine out of 10 times, they're going to say yes. And you're going to say, awesome. Would you mind making an introduction to me um, to your realtor? And then all of a sudden that realtor, because that's their client, you know, and they think that's going to be their future client, hopefully if they did their job and kept in touch with them, um, is going to take the time to chat with you. So that's just such an easy way to get a quick introduction to a real estate agent and then set up a follow-up time. And you've got all the questions in the blog right there on the top right was the five questions asked realtors from Jeremy Forcier. He's made it really easy for you to overthink it. 
And uh, those are quick five questions. You can literally write on a piece of paper. You just ask the person, hey, do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Or do you mind if I take some notes? And then you just start asking those questions and taking notes and you are set. So, so guys, another thing you're gonna start hearing me in these interviews is calling out the, the innovation lab team. So in my new role as, as a chief innovation officer, I, I got it, I've always had a team, but I've got even more team to create micro content, to upgrade our blog. So innovation team, let's make sure we add that to the playbook. And anybody that um, goes and checks out that playbook, it's it's gonna be a living, breathing thing. You know, every time I talk about new loan officers and it updates a blog that we have, we're gonna update it. So in the past, I'd create a piece of content and you know, I'm on to the next. But going forward, I'm always going to be that mortgage coach blog, mortgage coach sales boomerang blog. One day we'll have a, a unified web experience because we have merged with sales boomerang. We are one company now, um, but we will update that blog. So Todd, you just added the first enhancement. Uh, Galegos, what's missing? What are we going to add? What are we going to tell the innovation team to put on that, that, that blog post? What I think is in there, what, what we don't have in there at a, at, a, at a very deep level, I don't think is mindset. The mindset training, the mindset focus, the mindset exercise, because sales is a tough business. I mean, you know, this isn't an easy business, to, you know, and, none, and it shouldn't be easy to make a half million bucks, right? So, so, so it's not an easy business and, and that your ability to manage your mindset. And I, I really, I'm, I'm borrowing from, a great read. I think you've interviewed Larry Kendall before, but the uh, Ninja Selling book and the idea there are three things are mindset, skill set, daily activities. The mindset part of this is so important in managing mindset. What is your what is your daily routine? Like how do you how do you set yourself up for how do you set yourself up to win for the day? It's in it's in some of Todd's uh, win by noon. You know, he's got stuff in there like what are you grateful for? And did you you know, what are your three gratitude like that kind of that kind of exercise is so critical. I believe it is the difference between a really successful career long term and and not because this is a tough business. The thing about sales, I always say this like going sales is a tough job if you're not being successful because you drive home every night knowing you're not successful and you beat the I did beat the crap out of myself. I laugh. My wife, my wife would ask me when I would be driving home, I'd call her on my way home. She's like, did you lock alone today? I was like, no. And she was like, well, I don't understand. Like, how do you not lock alone every day? You came to work. Like, why didn't she like, oh, you're just making it worse. <laughs> and so, so but she's right. And I say that to loan officers today. It's like, did you lock alone today? It's like, no. It's like, why'd you come in? And so like, that's the point is like, what are you focused on? And what are you, you can train your mind because we're naturally negative. I am, I'm naturally, I'm, I'm like one of the most, I, I said, I'm an incurable optimist, but in my mind, I can be incredibly negative. And I think that's true for most people. And, and so managing that, what are you listening to? What are you reading? One of our core values here is strive to grow personally and professionally. What are you pouring in? Darren Hardy. So this started with, uh, you know, insane productivity. Your, your group here started as an insane productivity thing, but Darren Hardy's like, you got to pour in the clean water. You got to keep pouring clean water because there's a ton of dirty water that gets in there and it, it's fed to us all the time. And um, I think that's an area that is like critical for long-term success. So innovation lab team, let's get that in the playbook. Let's have a whole section on mindset. Uh, let's, let's make sure we're giving our YouTube channel. I want to, I, I just did a search in Mortgage Coach YouTube. Just within our YouTube channel, there's a search button. I typed in um, mindset. And, and not only do we have a playlist already for mental toughness, so I've got a playlist for that. Uh, you know, I've got a number. Um, this is an interview I did three years ago with performance coach Joe Giardini. And this is a guy who has been a coach, um, mindset coach, for the Dallas Cowboys, for the San Francisco 49ers, for lots of professional athletes. And, and I actually re-interviewed him um, June 16th. So we're talking like a month ago, I interviewed him and it was all about how to overcome prospecting reluctance, guys. And, and you know, this guy is a, you know, licensed um, psychologist. He, you know, helps families, but his specialty is performance leadership, you know, how to help people. And, and so uh, um, innovation team, let's make sure we uh, 
we properly document, we give Dave credit for it. Um, and we share a few videos that we think will be the most useful. And then just remember guys, reminder, uh, if you're new, one hour a day of YouTube, if you consumed a lot of it, just one hour a week, you know, one hour a week, I think every loan officer, every leader in the industry could get value if they invested an hour a week in the YouTube channel. Todd, you did give one suggestion, what's missing, and then Deborah will come to you with what's missing. And uh, if anyone's watching this and you have something that's missing, put it in chat. We'll consider adding it. Todd, what's missing from your perspective? You know, I, I love the mindset piece, but I think that the social media piece is so huge. And so I don't want to take that thunder from Deborah. I think I, that, I was you know, just going to wait have, a minute. She, Todd, she could talk. She could talk for. She could talk for 20 minutes on that. So, you know, I'm going to pass her the baton so that she can um, try to squeeze in some knowledge for the innovation team. And, you know, she's going to talk about graduated beakers or whatever she talked about in the background before as a science teacher. But, um, so but I think that that's minutes. what you got. What do I got? Okay. So um, all right, I already gave my, my script. I would do gave a mentor, um, you know, probably the other thing that, that I would uh, look at is, is, is what is, what's the reading list, right? So we always get quotes in, you know, we always get people who ask in, uh, the the YouTube channel or in the, in the mortgage coach group of, hey, I got audible credits, what book would you read? And so um, what are you doing outside of mortgage to learn? And so, you know, talking about mindset, like I'm listening, or I'm, I'm actually reading it right now on my Kindle. Um, I'm reading uh, your, your Future Self Now by Dr. Benjamin Hardy. And just, you know, the first, the introduction of it just sucked me in on it because it kind of talked about what Dave said is what are you doing today? So what his premise is, is, hey, would the future you in 20 years be proud of what you're doing today? And so think about that today from the future you as a successful loan officer in the career making six or seven, you know, high six figures or seven figures even in this mortgage business, um, are you doing today what you need to do in order to be that person in 20 years? And would that person in 20 years be proud? Or would you be like, oh, you know, I kicked off at four o'clock just because I was a little burned out. So I think it's just, uh, you know, what's that mindset piece? And I think mindset, you know, Dave, you nailed that I've, I've been through so much coaching in the business. And until I went through Keller Williams Bold, I had never really had any mindset coaching. And I think that uh, mindset means a lot. And what Ben Hardy says is that he says 80% of people are fueled by actually fear, not by where they're trying to go. And only 20% of people are, are fueled by that vision of, of, and the goals that they set. And so that would be, guess, be the other thing is, is if you haven't really said, okay, here's where I want to be in 12 months and then back that down to, okay, here's what I have to do for the next 90 days. If I want to be there in 12 months and then back that down to, here's what I have to do this month. If I want to be there in 90 days and then say, okay, well, if I'm going to be there at the end of this month, what do I have to do today? Like, what's the start today? What are those activities that I need to do? What's that learning I need to have? Who do I need to call? What do I need to watch in order to be that person I want to be down the road? Love it. Want to remind everybody, guys, we do have um, recommended must read books for new loan officers. We got 13 of them, but I think a takeaway from the innovation lab, let's add some books. So I might have to go a minute or two over because um, I want to make sure Deborah has plenty of time to answer what's missing. And then if we have time, uh, Dave um, and Todd, well, no, we're going to make time because I want one more book from each of you before this calls over that we add to our must read books for loan officers. So be ready to rapid fire answer that in like 15 to 30 seconds. Deborah, what's missing? I want to remind everyone, well, obviously I'm going to talk about social media, but also on everyone needs to follow the Modern Mortgage Summit on Facebook or Instagram. So pick whichever one that you like best. And if you're a branch manager, if you're in the C-suite, if you're a CMO, every Friday I have committed to Dave and Todd of showcasing a tip of the week. It's a Modern Mortgage Advisor tip. They're a little bit lengthy of videos, but it's something that I, between all of these interviews that Dave and Todd are doing on each channel, I'm condensing and bringing it to you all. And so this this video that was already posted. So y'all go there right now, go to Instagram or go to uh, Facebook. And I basically broke down film on the TCA, T, the TCA that we spotlighted this week, which was of Sosi, which was phenomenal of how he leveraged the TCA as a one to many on social. But I broke it down of just some tips and little tweaks that I would do just a little bit differently to, to get more traction, but went over the framework when you're writing out a script for when you're doing Instagram reels and just everything you would need to know of how to set up an Instagram account. How do you optimize your bio? Because all of that helps with conversion. So if you're making content, you need to have a strategy and some purpose. And there's some little tricks that you can learn just in the video that I posted today. So again, that's on the Modern Mortgage Summit account and share that 
make that maybe the, the lead for your weekly sales meeting, show that video, because that is the number one way to get more reach for free. I think when I looked last night, Sosi already had 8,800 views on that TCA video that he posted as a reel. That is not paying for ads. So if you don't have a lot of money, most new loan officers who are entering the business don't, or if you're a branch manager who wants your loan officers to be producing more and looking for ways to gain market share, it's really easy to do that through social media. So set an alert, look for those videos on Fridays because I'm bringing them in every week. Love it. Any, so guys, Innovation Lab, let's get some breadcrumbs to that and and, and and guys, I don't know that we completely nailed it with social media activity for new loan officers in this playbook. So, um, Deborah, if there were two things, I mean, like literally you got one, no more than two minutes, but brand new loan officer just gets into the business. Give them the Deborah bird. You got to do blank, blank and blank, bare minimum basics in terms of upgrading their social media, two minutes or less. You've got to do short form videos. I would do a reel a day. I would, if you're going to focus on anything, it would be reels, double down on those, double down on your story post, because those are where there's the most views. And then you've got to do the engagement piece. You can't expect engagement if you're not willing to give engagement and the conversion happens in the DMs. So if you can just think of when you're creating social, make sure do a TCA. If you're learning something with TCAs and you're watching the mortgage coach, in case you guys don't know, if you go to the daily trainings, I think Aaron Miller, he did one this week of just strategies of setting up your TCAs. Take one thing that you learn, rip off and duplicate. So I included the link that Sosi did where it's a great example of buying now or waiting five years. If you just did that once a week, and I know this works because we did it with Denise Donahue, who's one of the biggest brands in the business. We did it around the TCA, but create a content calendar where you're showcasing and don't waste your time on anything else. I would just do reels, add them to your stories, and then go and message people through DMs, do the story DMs. You've got to engage and that will help keep you top of mind. And it just makes it easier when you do make that cold call or when you're like, hey, I'd love to meet with you. I see what you're posting online. I've got this awesome strategy of a seller buy down that's gonna help you net more on your listings. I mean, that's what agents want. They don't just wanna go waste time and meet you for a coffee when they don't know what's in it for them. So be the solutionist for their business and that's solving their marketing problems or making them money. All right, guys. And, and also make sure you Google yourself uh, make sure you at least have a presence on, you know, Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, because realtors are going to check you out. Don't look stupid. Um, and and here's my, my business. last advice. Google my business. And also when you're watching one of the interviews I do of a baller loan officer, look them up on social media. Decide like, oh, I like what Dan, Dan Keller does. I like what Denise Donahue does. Follow them. Learn from them. What Jacqueline uh, you know, you does should, what Giuseppe does. <laughs> what Jacqueline, Giuseppe, but who uh, anyone I interview is a baller. And some of them are more intentional with social media than others. But, you know, start like having a couple people like, wow, that I want to emulate Sosie and, you know, whoever it is. So, closing thoughts, guys. Dave, if there were a couple books that we should add to the book list and 30 second comment, you know, closing thought. What's a book that's missing? This one, Fanatical Prospecting by Jeb Blount. You can always tell okay. if I like a book because like it's got all those tabs in it, but that's Holy like, moly. this is a phenomenally good book on just basic. This is what I've always thought is lacking in our industry. I, I and, and, and what I'm trying to change here is like professional sales training. We don't professionally sales train anybody. Not everybody doesn't do it, but by and large, it's not common in our industry. And the people who do focus on that do a phenomenal job. And then this one's for my buddy, Todd Booksbad. This book is phenomenal. If you don't, I mean, and again, same thing, like lots of tabs. If you don't, if you don't learn, this is, and this is being professional, being a sales professional by being able to overcome price objections. And my first rule of overcoming price objections is don't ever get one. And so that's, how do you show enough value to make sure that you're not getting a price objection? And this is a shameless total cost analysis plug, but if you're just delivering 
a fee sheet and not a consultative comparison. Let me show you how to save money when you get a mortgage. Well, then you've just increased your odds of getting shopped. So crush price objections, phenomenal. There's so much to learn in this book about how to, again, up your game as a professional salesperson. So we will add both of those books to the playlist. Also, I have interviewed Tom multiple times. He was actually introduced to me by Dave. The first interview I did was you interview with Dave Paul. interviewing you that author. You oh, I, yeah, you're right. I interviewed yeah. Paul, his son. Um, but guys, listen to those interviews. Get that those books. Todd, one or two books. And then Deborah, one or two books. And then let's wrap this up as quick as we can because we're over. You know, I think uh, Jonathan Roach's new book, 12 Habits to, Key Habits to Thrive, is, is a must read because it talks about mindset. He really talks off in the first chapter about um, your voice choice and when you, you know, you've got the opportunity at the podium every day, whether you're going to have a, let your negative voice win or your positive voice win. So um, that would be my one uh, game changer to add to the list. Good. And I, I, my one game changer is Amplify by Renee Rodriguez. When I wrote this um, book, I hadn't read the book. I hadn't, I, I haven't been mentored by Renee. I, I knew Renee, but now, you know, I've been through Amplify multiple times. Uh, it's life-changing, game-changing. All leaders, all loan officers should read Amplify. Uh, so we'll add that innovation team to the book. And Deborah, one or two books, if you were going to add a hey, book, what would it be? Marketing Rebellion, for those who want to understand really the mindset and where marketing has made shifts. And then also the one that Ben Lemon recommended to me, never lose a customer again. Just again, the importance of having a database and how you maintain a database because your biggest cost is that lost opportunity. So. All right. All right. Anyone listen to this, if you've got a book you want to recommend, the podcast, we, we all align mindset and consuming content that's going to make you a better human being, make you a better mortgage professional, should be a, a daily and weekly habit. So put your suggestions down below. Guys, sorry for going four minutes over, but hopefully we crushed it for anyone that is a new loan officer. I think we, we killed it for you. Anyone that mentors new loan officers, I think we gave you a lot of fodder for thought. And, uh, you know, thank you guys for another amazing Mortgage Coach Friday Mastermind. Every Friday, nine o'clock, we're here to lead and give value. Every Tuesday at nine, it's an interview. So uh, me or some amazing Mortgage Coach badass leader We'll be interviewing someone Tuesday at nine. Take care, y'all. Be good.